Hello and welcome to Learn Over Biology for Free with Ms. Estrick. Um, today's session is going to be on eukaryotic cells from the year 12 topics. There will be stages throughout this session where there'll be questions you can have a go at and also you might want to make notes to um, put as a table the structure and function of each of the organelles we're going to go through. So get yourself some paper and pen and off we go. So the 10 organelles that you need to know in detail are the ones that we've got listed here. And for each of these 10, you need to be able to describe the structure of the organelle and then give an explanation of the function. So that's what we're going to go through. And this may be what you want to summarize in a table. So you could have the organelle, one column is the structure, another column is the function, or this particular topic works really well as flashcards for revision. So on one side of your flashcard have the name of the organelle, and on the other side it could be a description of the structure, or you could have flashcards where it's name of the organelle and then a description of the function, or it could be with images. So there's lots of different um, sets of flashcards you could make to do with eukaryotic cells. So first off, we're going to see how much you know already, or if this is revision, how much you can remember. So see how many of these purple boxes that are blacked out or purpled out, you can identify the organelle of in an animal cell. Okay, so the top one, we've got our cell membrane. Now, although this actually looks like there's two layers, so maybe being um, two types of membranes, that is actually just one single layer, and in animal cells, the only external layer they have is the cell surface membrane. The next label that we've got here then, that is pointing to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So on the outside, all of these circles are representing the ribosomes. Then we've got the Golgi apparatus, so it's slightly curved in shape. The cytoplasm, then we have our lysosomes, individual ribosomes, the centrosome or centrioles, now that's not actually on our list of the structures that you need to um, know at this stage. Then we've got our smooth endoplasmic reticulum, and lastly the mitochondria. So same again, but this time for our plant cell and the structures that you don't need to know, I've left unlabeled in this example. So pause the video and see how many of these organelles you can identify. Okay, so we've got our smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now on this image here, it's showing slightly different how it was on the animal cell, um, but you can still see these folded cystine. Then we have ribosomes, so these tiny little dots that were shown. This whole structure is our nucleus, but it's split in two. We've got our nucleolus, the nuclear envelope, and then the pores within that envelope. And then branching out of the nucleus, we have our rough endoplasmic reticulum. Um, and the way we can tell it's the rough is because of those ribosomes attached to it. Slightly curved, so that's going to be the Golgi apparatus. And the vesicles branching off that will be the Golgi vesicles. We also have cytoplasm. We have mitochondria. The new, one of the new structures we have in the plant cell is the vacuole. And you can see the name of the layer on the outside of the vacuole is the tonoplast. Another structure which you don't find in animal cells is the chloroplast. Then the cell wall, so the outer layer, again, do not have those in animal cells. Inner layer is the cell surface membrane or plasma membrane is sometimes known as. So what we'll do then is go through each of those 10 organelles one at a time. So for the nucleus, just zooming in on that, we can see some of the different structures. So this outer layer, we've got the nuclear envelope. We have pores within that envelope, which allows the mRNA to um, come out of the nucleus. Nucleoplasm is what we call the granular jelly-like substance inside. And inside of the um, nucleus, there's the chromosomes, which are protein bound with histones. The very small sphere in the middle, that is the nucleolus. And that is where RNA is, or our RNA is produced and ribosomes. So that's the function of the nucleolus, but in general, the function of the nucleus is the site of DNA replication 
and transcription. So that is where our mRNA is created. And it contains all of the genetic code for every single cell. Endoplasmic reticulum. So we have the smooth and the rough endoplasmic reticulum. In both cases, it's folded cystinae, so these folded membranes. And the key difference is the rough endoplasmic reticulum, or the RER, has ribosomes on the outside, and that is where protein synthesis can occur. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum, this is where we'll have synthesis of lipids, um, and the lipids and carbohydrates can be stored here as well. And then this is just showing us um, a microscope image so you can see the difference between the diagram and the microscope image. These tiny, tiny black dots would be the ribosomes indicating it's the RER. Whereas here we have the smooth ER, we don't have those black dots on the outside. Golgi apparatus and the Golgi vesicles next. Um, very similar in appearance to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So again, it is folded membranes making these cystinae. Um, often the best way to recognize the difference is that slight curve. It always make, almost makes a semicircle shape. And you'll see as well, you have the vesicles pinching off from the cystinae. So if we have a look at then what the function is, the Golgi is where proteins are processed, packaged, modified. So for example, you could have carbohydrates added to a protein at this location to create your glycoproteins, which are often receptors. It could be to create the enzymes. Um, and then when all of these products are modified, that is what the vesicle is for. It's to pinch off and then the modified molecule can be transported. And that is why it says here it forms lysosomes. These vesicles can also be described as the lysosomes. And they'll be labelled, as we can see here, they have a label on them to indicate the destination for that molecule. The next one, the lysosomes then. So lysosomes, just to give you an idea of the size, we've got a lysosome here. So it's a relatively small organelle, the lysosomes. And they are vesicles or bags of digestive enzymes typically. And they could contain as many as 50 different enzymes just in one of these lysosomes. The one you're probably most familiar with is in um, phagocytosis, in the immunity topic. So you could have, as it says here, hydrolyzed phagocytic cells. So some lysosomes contain the enzymes lysozymes, which will digest the pathogens inside of your phagocytes. Um, and then once they've completely broken down the pathogen, or it could be actually just to break down um, dead cells within an organism, which is our autolysis, it will release um, any of the useful materials that can be recycled. The next organelle then, the mitochondria. Now this is our first double membrane organelle. So we have our outer membrane and the inner membrane is actually folded to create a really large surface area for one of the stages of respiration. And those folds create the structure called the Christi. On the inside, in blue on this diagram, we have the mitochondrial matrix. That's the site of one of the other parts, one of the other stages of aerobic respiration. So overall, the function then, site of aerobic respiration, um, therefore lots of ATP is produced inside of the mitochondria. The ribosomes. So a ribosome, we've got an image here of one ribosome, and then we've got another ribosome here just from another angle, so you can see the two subunits that the ribosomes are made up of. And ribosomes are made of two different molecules. So they're made of proteins and rRNA. And the R stands for ribosomal RNA. And it creates these two subunits, a smaller subunit and a slightly larger subunit. You do get different sized ribosomes. Um, so eukaryotic cells, which is what we're discussing in this video, they are larger ribosomes. You do have ribosomes in your prokaryotic organisms as well, but they are smaller in size. And the function, it's where protein synthesis occurs. The vacuole, now this structure is not in the animal cells. So we're looking at plant cells here. 
and it is this fluid filled um, area and it has a single membrane around the outside which we call the tonoplast. Now the function of that vacuole is it helps to give support to the cell. So it helps to make it turgid. So by filling with liquid in the middle, it pushes um, from the inside out to help give shape and structure to the cell. It also can store sugars and amino acids temporarily. And often, as it says here, the pigments may um, color petals to attract pollinators if it's within the flower. Chloroplasts, this is our second double membrane organelle. So again, we have an inner and an outer membrane. And within the chloroplast, we also have folded membranes. And these are called thylakoid membranes. And they're highly folded and then they stack up to look like these stacks of coins. Um, and those stacks are called the grana. And one by itself, one stack is called a granum. So that's what we've got here. We've got contained thylakoids, which are the folded membranes, which are embedded with the chlorophyll pigments. You also have the peach color is showing the fluid on the inside of the organelle, which is called the stroma. And that contains enzymes that are needed for photosynthesis. The function, it is the site of photosynthesis. So using light energy to create organic compounds. Cell wall. Now the cell wall you find in plant and fungi cells, but not in animal cells. And in plants, it's made up of the carbohydrate cellulose, whereas in fungi, it's made of chitin, which is also a polysaccharide, but it's a polysaccharide which contains nitrogen. The function though, whether it is in the plant or the um, fungal cell, is to provide structural strength. So both of those polysaccharides, cellulose and chitin, um, are very strong in structure. The plasma membrane. Now, this is your um, cell surface membrane. And it's found on the outside of all cells. It is a phospholipid bilayer, which we can see down here. We have um, our phospholipids and the bilayer. So we have the red circle is the head of the phospholipid, which contains the phosphate and glycerol. And then the tails are the fatty acid tails. And the heads are always on the outside, the tails always point inwards, and that makes your bilayer or two layers. You also get different molecules embedded through the membrane. So we've got some protein channels and carrier proteins. And sometimes you have proteins just embedded on the outside. Um, and here we have one there. We have a glycoprotein here, so a protein with a carbohydrate attached, which could be um, acting as a receptor. Cholesterol, so we've got some molecules here of our cholesterol, which is going to affect the fluidity of the cell surface membrane. So the function, it controls what can enter and exit a cell, and that's determined by whether um, whatever it is it's trying to enter or exit is lipid soluble. And if it's not lipid soluble, it can't diffuse through the cell surface membrane. So instead, it'll have to be transported through a channel or a carrier protein. So those are the 10 organelles going over the structure with an image so you can see what that structure looks like, but also know some of the names of those structures inside and then the function of each of those. So that's it for the eukaryotic cells. Um, if you do want to test your knowledge on this or practice it further, um, I'll put in the description box the link to the website, missestrick.com, where you'll find booklets of questions to practice um, just to help develop your knowledge further. And don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with all the latest videos that do come along to help you with your revision or learning as you go through.